All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nivishesh Sunyabadi Pashtyatya Deshatarane those two mantras I have to recite because I am his disciple. I am the initiated disciple of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. He accepted me as his disciple in April of 1974. And as I am his disciple, it is my duty to represent the philosophy, teachings, and presentation of this Vedic knowledge as he has taught me. Trinada pi suniche na turariva sahishnuna amani na manadena kirtaniya sadhari harin nama harin nama harin nama eva kivalam kalo nastyeva nastyeva these two mantras are the mantras that I live by. In all affairs of my life, mundane or spiritual. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the founder of the Hare Krishna movement, the manifestation of Krishna as a devotee in this age of Kali, has instructed his followers to wear around their neck this first mantra Trinadapi Sunichena Tororiva Sahishnuna Amanina Manadena Kirtaniya Sadahari. I must always present myself, I, I must always think of myself lower than the blade of grass, lower than the straw or the dust on the ground. I have to be more tolerant than the tree. I have to give all respects to others because Krishna is residing in your heart. I have to recognize that Krishna is in your heart. And then lastly, I must not be concerned what people think of me or say about me whether they like me or don't like me, that cannot be my concern. If I can do these four things, then I can achieve my goal of always being anxious and ready and eager to chant this Maha Mantra. Everybody, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Those who know me, you know that I often refer to this idea that I get a text message from Krishna in my heart. So, while we were chanting just now, Krishna sent me a nice text message. Here in this temple, we have a deity of Shambhu, Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva has appeared in the age of Kali in the form of Shankara Acharya, the founder of the Mayavad Sampradaya. But although Shankara Acharya is the propounder of the Mayavad philosophy, still he was doing that under the order of Krishna. And because he's actually Lord Shiva, he is still Vaishnavanam Yatha Shambhu, the topmost of all the followers of Lord Vishnu. To be a Vaishnava means to be a follower of Krishna or Vishnu, Narayan. That's what it means 
to be a vaishnava in the bhagavad gita krishna points out to arjuna in chapter 4 why he is speaking bhagavad gita to him and not duryodhan two qualifications of arjuna bhakto sime saka cheti arjuna you are qualified to hear this bhagavad gita because you are my devotee duryodhan was definitely not krishna's devotee and saka you are my friend and by duryodhan's actions he was certainly not krishna's friend because he had a plan that he would invite krishna and inviting him would arrest him what kind of friend is that i've gone to this devotee's house hundreds of times he never arrested me but i do not had that qualification of being krishna's devotee and krishna's not just friend dear most friend arjuna and krishna did many things so shankara acharya or in other words lord shiva himself the greatest of the vaishnavas or devotees he has written a glorification mahatmya of bhagavad gita every month i do a bhagavad gita session with some people where i used to live in torrance a group of indian people every month we do bhagavad gita and before every class we chant this gita mahatmya i'm going to speak on bhagavad gita tonight i'm going to finish up chapter 9 because for the past so many sessions here i have been speaking on chapter 9 so the text message from krishna was first go over this gita mahatmyam so if you're ready please repeat om namo bhagavate vasudevaya batukchi you do it the best out loud say it everybody om namo bhagavate vasudevaya gita mahatmya or gita glorification by sri shankaracharya gita shastram idam punyam yap pathet prayatak puman vishno padam avapnoti bhaya shoka di varjita one with a regulated mind who recites with devotion bhagavad gita which is the bestower of all virtue will attain to the holy abode known as vaikuntha the residence of lord vishnu which is always free from the mundane qualities based on fear and lamentation so first regulated mind the first order of yoga business is to get the mind and senses under control if there is no mind and self control there's no yoga because that's the beginning yama ni yama yoga means get the mind and senses under control then I must recite Bhagavad Gita with devotion. Then it said, just by reciting and hearing Bhagavad Gita, it bestows all virtue. There is a verse in the Bhagavatam, Punya Shravana Kirtana. The hearing of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam is itself a the most pious activity. So you have made a good decision coming here. You could be doing so many things, but you have decided to increase your pious bank account. Yes. Just by hearing 
this message of Bhagavad Gita. And it says, you will attain Vaikuntha. The very name Vaikuntha means the place where there's no anxiety. But this world, this your Belinda Placentia, wherever you, you can agree easily. So much anxiety. As soon as you get up in the morning, oh, what now? What have I got to do? I turn on the news. Ugh, God. Ugh. Anxiety. Or then you get a message from your daughter or son. Something went wrong. Oh, anxiety. Or you get a letter in the mail. IRS. Anxiety. Or you get your report back from the doctor. <gasps> yes, anxiety. That's the material world. But the spiritual abode, the home of Radha Krishna, that is Vaikuntha, no anxiety. Let's go to verse number two. Gita Jaya Nashi Lasya Pranayama Parasya Cha. Naiva Santi Hipapani Purvajanma Kritani Cha. If one reads Bhagavad Gita sincerely and seriously, so these are the two things. If you want to derive the most benefit out of Bhagavad Gita, sincere and serious, then by the grace of the Lord, the reactions of one's Past misdeeds will be nullified. So just see what benefit you get by sincerely and seriously hearing or reading Bhagavad Gita. Your sins, the account is torn up. You're bailed out. Okay, let's continue. Malane mochanang pungsam. Jalasnanang dene dene Sakrit Gita Amrita Snanang Sansara Malanashanam Just as every day we take a bath, especially today, maybe you took two baths, two showers, hot day like today. Typically sannyasis, real strict sannyasis, they bathe three times daily, whether it's winter or summer. But at least once in the morning or twice, we take a bath and we become refreshed. So in the same way, if you take a bath in the Ganges water of Bhagavad Gita, your heart will be cleansed. So when you pick up Bhagavad Gita, you're taking a spiritual bath. You're cleansing your heart. And as a result, you should be feel ah, refreshed. If you're really reading Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam, after you should feel nice and refreshed. Gita Sugita Kartavya Kim Anya Shastra Vistarai Yaswayang Padmanabhasya Mukha Padmad Venisrita because Bhagavad Gita is spoken by who? Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then there's no need to read any other scripture. This is what Shankara is saying. This, not me, I'm not saying. Shankaracharya is saying, since Bhagavad Gita is spoken by who? Yes, who, is he on the altar? Spoken by him, Shankaracharya says, don't bother with anything else. Then he gives the reason why. In the present age, people are so much entangled in material life to read all the Vedas, there's no time. Even, I hear it all the time, oh Prabhu, I have no time to chant. I have no time for this. I have, people say that. So Shankaracharya knew that. He says, that's all right. This one book, which book? Bhagavad Gita, which doesn't come from China, does it? Right? Everything comes from China, but not, maybe they print it. 
but huh? yes but the words the meaning is not from China no it comes from your Bharata Varsha your India from and Shankarchar is going to tell us more he says this one book is the essence of all the Vedas there's another word for Bhagavad Gita Gita Upanishad so it is the essence of all the Vedas that's why this one book is sufficient you're getting the essence of what four Vedas 18 Puranas Itihasas 108 Upanishads Vedanta Sutra all of that you're getting in its essential form if you just hear and read Bhagavad Gita and he says again he says especially because it is spoken by Krishna because it's spoken by Krishna that makes it even special Bharatam Rittasar Vasvam Vishnu Bhaktrad Vinisritam Gita Gangodakam Pitva Purnar Janman Vidyate so now he says Again, this is the second time now he's comparing Bhagavad Gita to the Ganges. You all know the Ganges. He says, he says that reading Bhagavad, hearing, hearing Bhagavad Gita is like drinking Ganga Jal. But it goes in the ear. Ganga Jal you either put on your head or on your tongue. But this Ganges or Ganga Jal of Bhagavad Gita is for your ear. And if you do that, your rebirth 